Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 5th, also known as Cinco de Mayo. If uh, you get a chance, it's an interesting story to read. Now, in my neighborhood, being that it's about 80% Hispanic, there were lots of celebrations going on. As a matter of fact, it's also called the Mexican St. Patrick's Day. It's celebrated in the United States, actually, more than it is in Mexico. In Mexico, it's just um, celebrated mostly in the city of Puebla because of the, it was concerning the Battle of Puebla, which took place on May 5, 1862. It's very interesting because the Mexicans, with about 4,000 ill-prepared troops, decided they were going to defend Puebla because the French, with 6,000 troops and artillery, were marching on Mexico City. So they were going to take a stand against a far superior force and not only fought them back three different times, but actually chased them and routed them. The general that was responsible for this was a young guy named Ignacio Zaragoza. Oh, if, and by the way, a Texan born in Goliad, Texas. So, like they say, don't mess with Texas. Yeah, it was actually part of Mexico at the time. It was considered Mexican Texas, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Unfortunately, he only lived uh, just a few months after he caught typhoid in September of 1862 and passed away, but that was a, a great psychological victory. It wasn't really long lived because the French did rally, bring in more troops, and later on they did take Mexico City, but um, within five years after, Mexican troops did fight back and they recaptured their country. So by 1867, it turned around and the French were driven out of Mexico. If you get a chance, uh, I'll put the uh, link here to Ignacio Zaragoza, the Wikipedia entry. But check it out. It's a very interesting story, one of those kind of underdog stories. And I think it's a good holiday to celebrate in uh, the United States because the guy was a Texan. Here's something from Germany. Um, as you know, it's uh, ACTA and SOPA and different laws like that. The copyright groups are not just targeting the United States. They're targeting Europe. They're targeting Asia, all kinds of countries to try to um, get these, this legislation passed to where basically big corporations and big entertainment industries are going to have as much control as they want of the Internet. Well, this happened a couple of weeks ago. I didn't have a chance to bring this story up, but I've been keeping it in case I had a chance to do it. So I'm going to do it right now. Copyright lobby hire, hires pro acta demonstrators. This copyright lobby group, in fact, two of them are behind it, went to a recruiting firm and they decided to hire students for $130 to demonstrate for two hours in a, a pro acta demonstration. It, the legislation is so horrible, in other words, they have to actually hire and pay people to demonstrate in their favor. And this is actually copyright industries that are supposed to be using their money to give it to the artists for royalties, but instead they're spending it for ridiculous stuff like this. And I translated one of the, the references to this article, this is from Torrent Freak, and the references to this article are in German, but I did do a translation, and this is kind of interesting if you get a chance, uh, listen to this part here. I, Alexander Schmidt, the official organization organizer of the demonstration of the intellectual property C. I have to pay the scheduled events for April 26, 2012, cancel at short notice. There are several reasons. Both the Federation of Industry and the Association of Music Industry have now announced that it is completely withdrawing from the event. In addition, I have asked both groups to call off the demonstration and to maintain confidentiality of all pre-shared agreements. In other words, they got caught with their pants down, and now they're trying to back out of it as quickly as possible. Uh, they did contact the recruitment agency, and they said they had nothing to do with it, which I believe, too. I mean, you call up any kind of hiring agency, and they'll hire bodies if you want bodies hired. But, yeah, basically they got caught um, having to pay people to demonstrate for their cause. It's such a pitiful cause. So if you get a chance to check out this article. This was sent to me by... Desmosa DC Alice. This is about human genes and rice opening up Pandora's pot. As usual, all the links to all the articles will be down below. World Watch Institute was the one that I got this article from, and they're going to, well, I guess they, they have already introduced human genes into rice, and it seems to have an effect. Now, they're going to, first, for the first time, they're going to bring it outside of the laboratory and actually be growing it in fields in Kansas, and this gene produces bacteria-fighting proteins found in human breast milk and saliva. Uh, I have two different problems, not only just putting human genes in plants and what that's going to end up causing without more study, but the fact that you're actually producing something in plants that has antibacterial properties such as antibiotics. Don't we get 
uh, enough problems with overuse of antibiotics causing these super bugs and stuff like this because this is specifically, I guess, going to be introduced into third world countries. And at first it will appear to be probably a, a magic bullet because it will obviously uh, cure diarrhea faster, things like that. But um, then as soon as the bugs adapt to it, this could end up... Uh, having a really big backfiring effect even in third world countries and then all of a sudden when uh, this is one of the few varieties of rice because so many people are growing this great new miracle quality of rice then all of a sudden what do you turn to when it becomes a failure I just don't like the idea of uh, doing stuff like this I think you always need a variety of different plants there's a reason why nature has decided a variety of different plants is the best strategy um, if this thing is just one type of plant too, what happens when a disease comes along or a, a root worm or something like that that attacks this plant? If all of the plants in all of the fields in a country are pretty much identical, they're all going down. So the next up here, this is from Pure Info Tech. Um, I just found out about this about a week ago, so maybe some of you know about this for a little bit longer. Windows 8 will not play DV discs anymore unless you pay for the Media Center pack. Now, I guess when this comes out, even if you could play discs originally on Windows 8, uh, they're going to actually shut it down. So unless you buy this Media Center pack, or I think they said, I, I'm trying to understand what this article actually says, I think maybe... Be, if you pay for the extra for the pro edition, the real expensive edition, you can probably just uh, do the upgrade for free. It's hard to really determine, and I don't think, as usual, everything probably hasn't been totally settled. But as usual, I would suggest people, I don't use the Windows Media Player stuff anyway. I use VLC Media Player. There's also a Media Player Classic. So it's not like you necessarily have to go with what Windows is making you do. And I can, see, I can see some of the argument, too. It's not just Windows necessarily being bad, guys. I realize there's licensing fees you have to pay for DVD playing software. And they're themselves, it seems like by the article, too, they're giving up the fact that a lot of people aren't playing DVDs anymore. They're playing uh, video streams themselves. And they're actually paying the licensing fees for a bunch of different codecs, which costs money, too. So I guess if you're going to go one route or the other, probably pay the licensing fees for the newer codecs and let people watch the videos and stuff like that without paying extra and then those people that still want the legacy DVD and they want it through Microsoft software for some reason they want to stick with Microsoft software okay charge them but we we always do have the option of VLC or Media Player Classic I just thought that was kinda neat so that's it for this week I want you to take care everybody I will catch you next week <laughs>